So it's time once again for another Triple Threat video here on OTRS Central, and I think I've got a good lineup of topics to talk about this week. I'm going to talk about CM Punk at the WWE, and I'm going to talk about Samoa Joe leaving TNA, and I'm going to talk about Brock Lesnar possibly staying with the WWE past WrestleMania 31. Look at the topics. CM Punk, Samoa Joe, and Brock Lesnar. Everybody have one big internet joygasm now. Even with the announcement of CM Punk signing with the UFC, you had to know deep down inside that the last chapter between CM Punk and the WWE had yet to be written and probably still won't be written for some period of time. Uh, we had to know it was going there. Even with that announcement, you had to know there was going to be something else. More was going to happen. It was going to develop into one big pissing contest between both sides to see who has the bigger Johnson. And what happens is all of them end up looking like morons. Well, that's exactly what we've got. Lo and behold, this week, WWE Dr. Chris Amon is suing CM Punk and Colt Cabana for a million dollars for comments Punk made on Colt's podcast about his physical condition at the 2014 Royal Rumble and the bump that apparently didn't exist and the fact that the WWE doctors were, uh, needless to say, reckless in their treatment and in their care. So, of course, the WWE doctor gets upset. CM Punk is upset. WWE is backing their doctor, backing their guy, releasing doctor's video footage of CM Punk not having a bump at the Royal Rumble. It's just all a bunch of stupid bullshit. Jesus Christ! And I thought us as professional wrestling fans were supposed to be the petulant, bratty, crying children. Well, if anyone's to blame for that, it's the fucking morons involved with and inside of the professional wrestling business. You want to talk about petulant, spoiled children and fucking brats and fucking idiots and fucking crybabies. It doesn't get any worse than this. Oh my God, they treated me badly. I hate you. Do, do, do. Oh, I can't believe you were it about my medical care. I'm going to sue you. Do, do, do. Oh, shut the fuck up, everybody. Jesus Christ, man. How the hell does it descend at this level? And where the hell is Vince McMahon's leadership in all of this? Because I don't give a fuck what anybody says. We are all hypocrites by nature. The WWE is full of hypocrisy. CM Punk is smoking hypocrisy and blowing it out of his fucking ass. Where the hell is the leadership of Vincent K. McMahon on this? I don't give a fuck what CM Punk's going to say. If Vince McMahon calls, if Vince McMahon wants a face-to-face -face confrontation, he's going to fucking get it with CM Punk. And you know goddamn good and well that would be the case. When is enough going to be enough with this bullshit? You got CM Punk trying to make his side of the story seem true. You've got the WWE and their doctor trying to sit there and say that their side is true. Both sides are trying to say that they're correct. And all that ends up happening is everybody ends up being fucking wrong. Dear CM Punk. Dear WWE. Dear Dr. Chris Amon. I don't give a fuck what you want to say about each other. I don't want to give a fuck about who's right or who's wrong here. Who's in the right? Who's in the wrong? Would everybody please just grow the fucking hell up? So the big news earlier this week in the wrestling world was the announcement by Samoa Joe that he was leaving TNA. He's done with Impact Wrestling. And when I saw this announcement, I was kind of met with a hmm feeling. I mean, I understand that a lot of the hardcore fans really like Samoa Joe and a lot of the things that he represents. And for many TNA fans in particular, he in a lot of ways represents what TNA used to be and what they wanted to be once again. But the simple fact of the matter is when we look at Samoa Joe in TNA, he's been a non-factor for years. I'm sorry, but that's the truth. He's been an absolute non-factor. Here's a guy at 36 years of age. People talking about him now going to NXT and being on the WWE. Why the fuck would the NXT want him? What does he really bring to the table? And furthermore, why would the WWE want to bother with somebody like a Samoa Joe? Again, what does he really bring to the table? People are acting like this is 2005 ROH Samoa Joe or 2007-2008 TNA Samoa Joe. No, this was 2015 out of shape and frankly didn't seem to give a fuck Samoa Joe. And leave it to TNA the idiots that they are, to be pushing yet another guy when he is pushing his way out of the fucking door. They give Samoa Joe a top push as a top heel as a part of their top heel faction when they don't have him locked up under a long-term contract. Just like they did with fucking Bully Ray 
They're pushing him in the top spot, and they don't have him locked up to a long-term contract last year, just like they did the year before with A.J. Styles. We sat there and thought, oh, what a genius thing. What one great big work TNA is doing. Well, apparently nobody was in on the work because it was a fucking shoot. These idiots did all this shit with A.J. Styles, and they didn't bother signing him to a long-term deal. They didn't even have any certainties or guarantees. Why does TNA continue to do this stupid crap? Why would you finally push somebody, what, to sit there and say, oh, we'll give you this little carrot here if you stay with us. Oh, my fucking God. It's a shame when I look at Samoa Joe because in a lot of ways I always felt like he was mistreated by TNA, even though sometimes I felt in a lot of ways that Samoa Joe kind of came across like he didn't give a fuck and maybe sometimes he deserves some of the treatment that he got. The bottom line is I hate to see talent be underutilized and misused. And Samoa Joe definitely was underutilized and misused by TNA for many years. And only the idiots in TNA thought it was a good idea, apparently, like Gaborik and the rest of the clowns, Lagana, you name it, to sit there and push a guy when he's on his way out the fucking door and you have no guarantees of him being around long term. That's so typical of TNA and their stupidity. But I want everybody here to pump the brakes and get realistic. Samoa Joe is 36. What the hell does he really bring to the WWE at this point in time? Why would anybody really give a fuck about him? Why would WWE give a fuck about him? Frankly, at this stage of his career, he is better off working in ROH or he's better off working in Japan. I don't see why everybody is so upset about this. It's not like TNA had done anything really worthwhile with Joe, frankly, for fucking years. And it's not like he seemed to care enough to do anything to change his current plight that he's been undergone for years. So I, I don't get it. I don't understand why people are acting like this is 2007, 2008, Samoa Joe. It's not! I don't see why people are acting like him going to WWE would be the most awesome thing in the world. It wouldn't be. You really think they would push Samoa Joe? You really think they would do anything compelling or interesting with them? If a company like TNA, who would seem much more suited to Samoa Joe's strengths, couldn't figure out how to use him properly, what the fuck makes you think that WWE would do such? With us heading into WrestleMania season and being well underway in WrestleMania season, there's a lot of discussion right now about the future of Brock Lesnar and the WWE. It's well known that his contract with the company expires after WrestleMania 31, and there's a lot of questions about whether or not he's going to return. There's a lot of thought that he will leave and go back to the UFC. There's some thought that the WWE can't justify the expense for the limited return that they get. But there's also a train of thought out there that seems to be advancing over the past couple of weeks that Brock Lesnar may be staying with the WWE post-WrestleMania 31. He might have some concerns about the long-term effects of concussions if he goes back to fight for the UFC. Maybe he likes the kind of uh, cupcake sweetheart deal he has with the WWE. He makes quite a bit of money for working very little, and maybe that's appealing to him. He gets to pick and choose his spots, and he has a lot of control over what he does, and he doesn't quite risk the physical injuries uh, that he would if he went back to fighting in the UFC. You know, and I look at it this way. I talked about this, what I would do with WrestleMania 31, and I'm hoping maybe that's a part of what's going on here, is that the WWE is intentionally leaking out word through their channels and backdoor avenues that Brock Lesnar could stay past post-WrestleMania 31. Because part of the problem with having him being the champion going into WrestleMania 31 is that more likely than not, you know you're going to get a very predictable finish, and at least, if anything else, you can accurately predict that he's probably not going to be the champion at the end of the night. That can limit the amount of appeal, appeal that this type of match would have, whoever would end up facing a Brock Lesnar. Well, now, if you throw this into the equation that he could potentially stay, that he could be there post-WrestleMania 31, it leaves a lot of avenues open. It gives you a lot of different possibilities. Now, look, I don't think Brock Lesnar has had the greatest run since he's come back to the WWE. I know they have really steamrolled with him over the past year in terms of what they've done, and they've corrected a lot of the previous wrongs they did with him in 2012 and 2013. But again, I don't sit there and see where the WWE got a whole lot of return out of Brock Lesnar. He went from being a special attraction and a big attraction to being no attraction to being when he does show up being the wrong type of attraction. And furthermore, with the limited amount of dates that he works and the amount of money that he costs them, for frankly what I feel is the limited amount of return that they get from him, I don't see why the WWE needs to be so concerned about it. I don't really see where losing Brock Lesnar is that big of a deal if he does leave the company post-WrestleMania 31. But if he did stay... I guess people would be happy. My mind, my opinion, 
I think they should let him go. I think he should go off and do something else or just not do anything at all because I just don't think it's been as beneficial for all sides as many people like might want to make you believe. And there's a part of me that secretly hopes that this is the WWE trying to spin people and try to throw people off of the scent and try to sit there and create an element of surprise for a WrestleMania 31 show that, frankly, in my opinion, is going to need it. So if Brock Lesnar stays, he stays. But I'm not going to be that excited about it. I'd actually be more excited at this point in time, frankly, that he did leave and that we knew ahead of time that he was going to leave. But then again, part of the problem is, is if we do know ahead of time he's going to leave, that doesn't leave a whole lot of potential for spontaneity or surprise come WrestleMania 31. So I've let you know what I think, but I want to hear from you. What do you think? What do you think about the back and forth between CM Punk and WWE? What do you think about Samoa Joe leaving TNA and what the future holds for him? And what do you think about some of these recent reports that Brock Lesnar could be staying with the WWE after WrestleMania 31? Let me know all your thoughts on all these topics and whatever else you want to spout off at the mouth about in the comment section down below.